Did your preparation change at all in the weeks leading into it, the fact you're, you're away? Well, my preparation is kind of like, uh, I guess I should say, got prepared like I fought when I, like I did, a little bit like when I did when I fought the heavyweight champ. Um, because this is a bigger, stronger guy, something you got to really deal with, and you definitely have to have respect for their power. But at the same time, you got to still remain you. And what I do is prepare myself to be the best me that I can be. When the Australians see me fight, they're going to realize that all this time that they have not been watching Roy Jones fight, they've been cheating themselves. Because there's no other fighter on this planet as exciting, as charismatic, and as fun to watch as Roy Jones Jr. And they're going to see that come December 2nd. Are you enjoying your boxing more now? Maybe any stage of your career? Heck yeah, I am. I sure I don't know why or how that happened, but I definitely, I mean, do you know why? I don't know why, because now I got something to prove. Back then, they got the way they was used to me winning all the time. So it was like, oh, he going to win, he going to win. Now it's like, oh, no, I don't know. So after all those drastic things that happened, can he come back? So that gave me something to prove. And that's what I always fought for. That's what I always loved. Like he said, I really like being underdog. Since I can't be the underdog, at least I can be out of the country, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, uh, you're coming out probably two weeks before you fight. Yeah. Um, Will you be bringing some sparring partners with you, or are you going to look at some Aussies, you know? I'll probably bring a few with me. I, I do have one Aussie mate that I spar with, so I'm even in the United States, so I'll probably look at him and one more guy. You know, and that's, that's about it. So who's the Aussie that's I don't want to talk about it. You might go kill him, y'all might knock him off or something, so I can't use it. <laughs> I ain't gonna put him in danger like that. Roy, was it always your plan to fight at 40? Was there ever a time early in your career when maybe you thought about retiring? Really, I ain't have no plan, because if I'd have had a plan, it'd probably say 55, but, you know, I don't really have a plan, because I ain't got sense enough to stop. So it's best that I just be cool and just kind of take it as it comes. Roy, what do you know about rugby league and, and the, the Melbourne Storm? Uh, obviously, you were wearing the Melbourne Storm jersey when you arrived, have you learned a bit about the game? Well, yeah, I'm a bit of the game. And uh, rugby is a tough sport. I have a lot of respect. I learned learned, learned a lot about rugby when I was here the first time. And uh, the storm had a perfect nickname for me because I am the perfect storm. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. Daddy, and I don't like you? eels at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that resembles a snake, I can't stand it. You know what I'm saying? I do not like them. So it's just a perfect, perfect situation for me. I always tell people, beware. Because come December 2nd, there will be a storm in Australia. A perfect storm. Danny, what did you think when you saw Roy rock up in the, uh, the storm jersey? So, so what, what did you feel when you saw Roy rock into the country wearing a Melbourne storm top? I'm an Eels fan, mate, so uh, yeah, it rubbed me up the wrong way. Um, I, I'm not really fussed, you know. It's, it's, the, the Eels are going to steamroll the, uh, the storm. And um, as far as the perfect storm goes, this is what the weather's going to remain like. Nice and sunny and we don't need no storm. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the storm chaser. There will be a storm. Trust me. There will be a storm. It'll blow over quickly. There will be a storm. <laughs> there will be. Trust me. Like, like a southwest front, it'll just blow over very quickly. There will be a storm. Danny, what did you make of the back with Jeff Lacey, Roy's fight in August? Uh, what, what, what can you say? It was, a, it was a supreme effort. Like I said, you know, it was an incredible effort to do to someone who's a two-time world champion and a very, very feared puncher. So, um, you know, all credit to what Roy Jones achieved that night. It was, it was, it was pretty brilliant watching ringside. But saying that, um, saying that, I think if I hit Jeff Lacey that many times, I'd probably be up for manslaughter. You know, and that's not disrespectful. That's not taking anything away from Roy's, Roy's you know, his, his performance. We're different fighters. He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a classic boxer, puncher, and I'm a classic banger, brawler. So it's, it's you know it's going to be exciting, and it's I guess with my will and and, and with, with with the underdog tag I'm taking into the ring with me, um, it's 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 kind of it inspires me. There's a lot of people that there's a lot of support. A lot of people have come up to me and said good luck against Roy Jones. You know all the best, Greeny Unreal, great for you know for for, for fighting the bloke and, and, and defending your world title against him and. I've got a, a, an overwhelming kind of wave of support from from the you know the punters out there, and you know the drive past the work site and the tradies are all go greeny, you know we're with you. So it's, it, it gives me a lot of inspiration, not just for myself to win this spot, but for doing for my family, my friends, and 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 you know my supporters of this great country. Danny, you're, you're a Perth boy. What's it mean that will you be splitting your time between here and Perth, preparing for this fight, or you got a place yourself here? I do what I normally do, you know, base myself here in, in, uh, in Sydney, it's where my daughter was born, so, well, you know, so I'm very, very happy to have the fight here. Uh, my professional career started here, my first, you know, 16 or about 13, I had my first 16 fights were in Sydney. 
Um, so it's 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 a special place to me, and also you know my strength and conditioning team, fasterfootball.com, that do the Parramatta Eels. Um, you know Hayden Knowles and Craig Carrick. I'm in great hands. So you know I'm not going to change the formula. We're not going to try and reinvent the wheel. Although I'm fighting, you know, one of the greatest fighters ever. The, the, the training camp's not going to change a hell of a lot. What I do in training isn't going to change a hell of a lot. How much I do isn't going to change that much. It's just what happens on the night. And I guess for me, mentally, it's going to be... Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing for me. I am mental, so I've got to control that. And stop it from, you know, really spinning out and going, uh, going haywire. And, um, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest the biggest thing I'm up against is, is, is my insanity. Um, sometimes I get too G'd up and too, too, too excited. And uh, I've got to kind of stay like a bit of a rise the storm. I've got to stay mentally like a mild front, not a cyclone. Roy, after this fight, will people be saying you're pound for pound number one in the world again? I don't know. They don't, they don't know what they're looking at. You know what I mean? That was a kid they didn't see after the last fight. How many people can see those six and seven hooks consecutively at that speed and with that power behind? I mean, they ain't going to tell the truth about it, so don't pay them no attention. Don't worry about what they say. Just watch what I do. Does it offend you that some riders break? No, because no, I realized they don't know. If they knew they'd been, they wouldn't even put nothing like that. They had me number one through nine, and they put me number 10 in South Park. I hope they do. I hope, I, hope he's, I hope the new ratings come out, and he's in the top 10, because that means I'll slide straight in after the fight. So I'm pretty happy. And I'm obviously, you know, I got support like Vak Dung Da Chin and Vic Da Chin, the uh, you know the flyweight, super flyweight, undisputed world champion. I'm going to take that kind of aggression into the ring. My mate Vic, you know, we're going to be training together for his fight coming up, um, you know, December 12th. So I'll be in the same you know same gym with Vic, and uh, with an animal like that, you know, you can't help mm. but take that that sort of aggression and that type of uh, you know. And we're mates. I've been mates with Vic for a long time. So train alongside the bloke. It's going to give me a lot of inspiration. And you know, he's only a, a super flyweight, but um, you know, I've told you to stay away from cruiserweight, not heavyweight. You know, you've got enough for the title belts, mate. Don't be greedy. Justin, as a promoter, how were you able to make this fight? Danny retired from the years away for 18 months and he's come back and next thing you know he's, he's fighting Roy Jones Jr. How did Dream Machine do this? We had discussions with Jones's crew probably about 12 months before Danny retired and for whatever reason it was always discussed and, and sitting there but the timing was never quite right. And again, it just happened out of chance. Angelo was in America and, and got the contacts and just gave him a buzz and it, it led from there. And, and basically, we had the opportunity to go to America and fight on the undercard and, and see Roy Jones firsthand and obviously Roy see Danny. And it, uh, it just sort of led from there. We, we did a deal pretty quickly. Things always change. Americans love to change things and, and think it's their way or the highway, but they're, they're coming into our backyard and uh, we'll do it our way. I don't think it's a compliment. I think, uh, you know, I think it's, the, you know, Danny is a very well-known fighter. This is a big fight. It's a historic fight. It's going to be the biggest fight in Australian history. So, uh, you know, I bring, the, the, Danny's bringing a lot to the table, you know, in terms of what, uh, and, and Roy's bringing a lot to the table. But, uh, and we're not looking past this fight. I mean, this fight has to, Roy's got to win this fight in order to make it worth our while to come down here. And so uh, we never changed anything, uh, and we signed a contract. We never had a contract before the, the Lacey fight. We made the deal after.